Hello and more, more and ladies and gentlemen, Don Spector here with an hour review and today I have for you a dongle to remember, the Fossey Audio DS02 2024 edition. Uh, yes, uh, I've been very curious about this dongle after reading the specs and uh, I've asked Fossey Audio to send it over and they kindly agreed to it, so thank you very much for sending it to me for review. But uh, I have not been asked, influenced or anything to say yeah, about this positive or negatively. So everything here is exactly how I found it and yeah, let's get directly into it. Um, packaging and accessories uh, as usual, uh, unfortunately I do not find the packaging at the moment. But the accessories I have here, you do get a USB-C to C cable that is about 5 centimeters long. And as you can see is this twisted style here. The twisting itself is done okay, uh, I've seen better, I've seen worse. Uh, thickness of the wires is fine, uh, I wish they would be a bit thicker generally because that would mean they survive a bit longer. And also the strain release here as you can see is just hard plastic so it doesn't release any strain. So there's definitely some improvement potential at that. Then you get an USB A to C connector, just like this. <laughs> Unfortunately not color matched and uh, speaking of color matching, as you can see, the accessories are not exactly well matched there. This is okay enough, but it's still like a shade off. But overall, um, yeah, you also have a manual of course in there and I think the accessories are basically what you need to get the dongle up and running. And next, let's talk about the build of the dongle and um, yeah, um, this is using a thick aluminium shell as you can see here on the side. It has literally zero flex going on, like even if I press it hard there's no flex and I assume the uh, like slightly concave structure here, you can probably see like best at this angle, is uh, exactly responsible for that. And uh, yeah, uh, I would say let's first start with the connectors here. So as you can see you do get 3.5 and 4.4 and, and uh, these seem to be integrated well. I see no weird seams around it. Um, unlike for instance here the uh, CVG VVT1 as you can see here there's some gap around the outlet. Here well integrated I have no issues with that. And then also the top and bottom plate, the aluminium cutout here also seems to be well integrated. It doesn't move, it doesn't rock, it's just rock solid there. And then at the back we have a USB-C connector, um, also seems to be fine, it is uh, relatively, and we just plug it in so you can see what I mean, uh, it's a very tight connection so really you need to push the connector in and that means also removing it uh, is not as easy but I prefer it to be more tight than more loose and also I have no problem with this. And then next the buttons here, plus and minus, they seem to be integrated as well. They are also I think aluminium, they have a nice pressure point here and yeah they seem to be work just fine. Overall for this price point between 50 to 60 bucks, honestly this is a really well built dongle and I assume it will survive everything that you can throw at it. And next let's talk about connectivity and power. And as it is the case with most dongles, yes, this only has USB-C input and that means you can plug it in your smartphone, your computer or wherever. And um, yeah, um, unlike for instance, again, we have a, a criticized here with CVG VVT1, which is limited in terms of uh, how much it can uh, uh, like decode only 48K. This one can do whatever you want it to do. Like you can go all the way up to 384, like it just does everything there. And um, yeah, the older version of this, um, yeah, this is again 2024, this uses an AKM uh, chipset. And uh, yeah, the newer ones uh, here with the AKM, they measure really well according to their own data sheet here. And um, yeah, in single ended work you only get 150 milliwatts of power, which is similar to what some instance here the UP5 would give you, or the BTR5 or most other uh, Bluetooth receivers or dongles that use the um, ESS uh, 9219C chip. This one gives you 150. But balanced, whoop, shit goes up to 510 milliwatts at 32 ohms. This is really good and basically means this dongle is able to drive basically everything you can throw at it. Even my Zandara absolutely worked fine here and granted my desktop setup with like 4 extra power or so <laughs> does probably do a bit better but yeah, this is totally fine. Like it drives my Zandara without any problems. And really I have no problems in terms of like drivability here. Like really everything works. 
IEMs are dead silent, like even something really sensitive at like 8 ohms with like 120 decibels, dead silent at all. And yeah, connectivity in power, I would say, is also pretty damn impressive. Software, um, small missed opportunity here. The uh, yeah, DS2 does not come with software. There's no integrated EQ. There's no way to influence filters. Um, so just a small nitpick here, but again, uh, this price point honestly, I have no problems with this. And then next, let's talk about usability of this dongle. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what I should say here critici on a critical level. This thing is working flawlessly in terms of usability on my smartphone, on my laptop, on my desktop. Really, it's plug and play everywhere. And USB just worked absolutely fine. And as I said, um, even the output power here on balanced uh, from Vesendara, totally sufficient. And then going to an IEM with low resistance, also absolutely fine. Literally zero noise flow that I could hear. And also volume controls. Mm, this is just hardware volume. That means software volume is separate. And um, I know some people don't like this. Me personally, I think I prefer it like that, that this is just hardware volume. Uh, but new knowledge may vary and I'm not going to criticize it because yeah, I personally don't mind it, but you may. And um, what else can I say? Um, yeah, um, oh, uh, one nice thing that I noticed, unlike the Hibi FC4 or other dongles that use the ES 9219C deck chip, well, this is barely getting warm. Like really, even at the current temperature, which is here in Germany, Give or take 28, 29 degrees with high air moisture. Um, yeah, this thing just doesn't get as warm as my hand. Like I would assume it's maybe 30 degrees or so. Like if you have, if I'm running with my Santara, which takes quite a bit more power than my IEMs. But overall, yeah, this is again really impressive because barely gets warm. And my Hibi FC4 after running it for like half an hour of Santara would be hot to the touch. So usability with this, absolutely flawless. Nothing to criticize. And now um, let's talk about sound. Um, unfortunately, I do lack the measuring equipment, so I can't tell you how this actually measures. And plugging in IEMs or headphones honestly doesn't make sense because it is a flat measuring device. So that means my measurement of this looks exactly the same as it would look on my desktop setup or here on the uh, uh, up 5 or anything else. You don't see any difference there. So it doesn't make sense to measure for me, um, but just to my ear, um, yeah, this is sounding really, really good. Um, so good, in fact, I would be hard pressed to distinguish it between much more expensive devices. And um, again, something like the here, uh, the CBG VVT1 with its 10 ohms. Yeah, that sounds just more warm. But this thing is, it just sounds neutral to me. Like, yeah, it subjectively, it's clear, it's transparent, it's punchy, it's agile, it's airy on top. And um, yeah, if I would have to nitpick, like really smallest nitpick, um, subjectively, I think this might be sounding a bit U-shaped. That means it's a bit grainy in the upper most registers and has a bit more oomph in the lower most. But again, we are talking about something that is very subjective and it might just be my hearing on different days being slightly different. So overall, yeah, um, or, or me not volume matching perfectly, that can also be in reasoning. But yeah, overall, this sounds really nice and uh, really it's, it's just flawless overall. And that brings me to the conclusion. Um, as I said, uh, or wrote in the title, this is a dongle to remember. That's really the best I can describe it. It really does everything I want a dongle to do flawlessly. It sounds really well. It's well built. It has no flaws that I could think of that would make me not highly recommend this. And at this price point, 50 to 60 bucks, honestly, it sounds so good. Like in blind test, I would be hard pressed to distinguish it between my desktop setup. Of course, assuming we're, uh, we're using headphones that are not super difficult to drive. But again, just using my Edigia or also the Sandara or IEMs, very difficult to tell them apart because it's just a relatively flat and well sounding device to me. And that means uh, I would strongly recommend the Fossi Audio DS02. Uh, very nice device, very good dongle, and also very fairly priced. That's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, if you have recommendations, if you have criticisms, please leave a comment. End of distance, Spector. Out.